idea about your environment you must must uh, oh, it in the music and the arts. So the arts. Oh, my God. <laughs> Good evening from Nigeria. My name is Shegun Olo and this is Objective Media. Well, <laughs> this is the first time uh, since a long time that we know that Obasanjo and uh, uh, Wally Shrinka have always been at loggerheads. But, uh, you know, for the first time, so Wally Shrinka seems to be in agreement with Obasanjo. What's going on? And it is this very sensitive topic of Islamization and then Fulanization of Nigeria. <laughs> How is that? You want to Fulanize Nigeria? I want to Islamize the country? <laughs> well, this argument or this, this allegation has been on for a while now that, about, that uh, the federal government is trying to Islamize Nigeria. Wow. And also fulanize the country. Well, at some point you will wonder who is Islamizing, who is fulanizing? Who are they doing that against? Who will be at the at the, at the benefiting end? Who will be at the you know at the detriment? To whose detriment will it be if they fulanize or Islamize Nigeria? And then arguments poured on the internet with a few persons saying, Oh, no, you are wrong. You know, what do you call fulanization or Islamization? You know, and then some persons came up to say, Excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, you know, when, when you have universities in the country, more than the largest number of private universities in the country are owned by churches. And they started giving statistics of other institutions controlled by Christians. And you are saying they are Islamizing the country? <laughs> Others are saying, no, it's not about that. It's about access to Asso Rock. Okay? And the appointments of this government, most of them are going to the Fulanis, the Aousas. Okay? Most of the approvals. You know, they are going to... And then... Some people made reference again to the python dance in the east to say when it concerns Christians, they do python dance. They attack people. They are killing people. They are, exp they are sending people to exile. But when it concerns Muslims, they will be putting it in the budget. In fact, they will be going to China to borrow one billion dollars. Claiming they want to fight Boko Haram. And then when somebody is being removed from office. They are replacing that person sensitive post. They will replace that person with an outside of Fulani man. And it's not necessarily the most qualified. Some are making examples of the Chief Justice. In fact, recently somebody drew attention to okay, Yomisho Gunle of the complaint res police complaint response response unit that was removed. Who replaced him? Okay? If your name does not start with, start with M, not Mavrodio, like Buhari, like Mohammed, you cannot hold key positions. And if your name starts with M, but it's not a Muslim name, <laughs> arguments like that, we started hearing, go on social media, you see, people arguing Islamization and Fulanization of Nigeria. Okay? But, Obasanjo, being what some section of media have described as elder statesman, others described as controversial ex-president, others as they have described as prominent Nigerian. If somebody of that status came out to say, he has seen that this, this is an attempt 
Although you cannot also credit over Sonja completely. Abi? Because <laughs> sometimes that man can be funny. He might be up to one gimmick. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, Oba Sanjo can be funny. Sometimes, Oba Sanjo can be doing something for the sake that because he's not getting something or what he wants, you are not acceding to it. Oba Sanjo can attack you. Alright? You really don't want to support you to power. The moment he sees that he's no longer relevant in your government, he switches position. <laughs> so you can't trust him. That's another opinion. But then, for the first time since history, no first black man Nobel laureate, proudly Nigerian, Professor Wale Shoenka came out to say, yes, what Abbasan just saying, is saying is true. There's an attempt to Islamize and flanize Nigeria. As a result, we cannot continue to look. All Nigerians must wake up, you know. So, Wally Shwenka came out to say, federal government should pay attention to what Obasanjo is saying about Islamization and Flanization. And I have a few comments to make about it. A few comments to make about it. After, give me just like a few seconds. I'll be right back. Uh, where's, where's my man? Let me quickly do this because it's very important. Eh? I'll do this because it's very important. Let me, I'll, I'm going to mute, mute the comments for, for a moment so I can do this quickly. Eh? Now, you can see at my front, some of you must have been wondering, Shago, what is this one? Are you selling products? No. <laughs> I'm not selling products. Uh, let me give you the, the background to this. There's a young man who, who just returned from UK. I met him today at the airport. Although he had messaged me a few days before he left the UK that he would love to meet me as he arrives in Nigeria. And I said, okay, I gave him terms. If I must meet you, there are terms and conditions. <laughs> he said, okay, I gave him the terms that I cannot come to where you are going. As you arrive in Nigeria, but I can block you at the airport. You know, my times can be spontaneous. Alright. So he agreed. I said, okay, if that is the case, we can do it. So he said he has a few gifts for me, some things, and then he brought the following items. Like, I have unpacked them. You know, that was the way the lady was presenting something. So I unpacked them before I left the airport so that I can be sure I will not get home and blow. So that if there was, there was going to be any explosion, at least at the airport, there will be people to rescue. Well, this is quality, quality lapel, lapel mic. Alright? One of the items he brought. And I want to appreciate him so very much. And that person, his name is Yinka. I'm going to show you his photo very shortly now. The second item he gave me, there were six items. I opened this one when I unpacked it. It's a smart wristwatch. Alright, are you following? I'm coming somewhere. I'm coming somewhere. When I unpacked the third one, let's check. Alright. This is something like a flash drive, okay? But it's some of you already know it. You know, it's a spy camera, but it's made like flash drive, okay? I don't talk too much about the spy cameras. 
but there are two in the you know two separate uh items in that category of function okay drop them here the next one i unpacked it is also another kind of you know spy camera he said he wants he loves what i'm doing and he wants to help or assist to enhance my work i unpack the next one i hope you're following all right it's a wireless handheld microphone all right wireless handheld all right it's not the brand i i know so well it's not uh i think it's fifini technology or something fifini aha uh -huh. is it five fine or fifini handheld microphone for interviews i see if he was reading my mind i want to start going on the street to do interviews very soon and then the last one happens to be a tab his name is yinka i'll display his photo maybe before the end of the show but if i don't if i don't remember or if i do remember but i cannot figure a way to capture the screen of my phone on the show then i'll do it another time but his name is yinka I want to pray for you, Yinka. That's a young man about my age, returning from UK, and he's not doing all his money on nightclubs. He says he believes in what I am doing and that he'll be willing to support. So he gave all of these gadgets. All right. So let me display the screen, the comments back. I'll finish showing what I wanted to show you, and that is to tell all of you also who have something in mind to do to support projects that are progressive and you are still contemplating should i should i not if the lord is ministering to you now do it <laughs> Inka, who supplied all these gadgets you see you know when you where that place you are picking the money from to buy gadgets for a fellow man you will always continue to have abundance you will never run dry of supplies so shall it be i so much appreciate it he didn't give me money he said i love what you're doing and i want to add to the gadgets you have and he gave me all this okay that's 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 on one side now having said that let us come back to the topic we are discussing all right yinka and i will do something soon together i'm not saying he's asked he's not he has not asked me for anything i'm not sure he did it because he wanted a favor all right he did it because he loved what i'm doing and he feels that i would i would do maybe better if i have more gadgets all right so that's on one side let's come back to our topic now what is showing kai is saying that listening to what obasanjo is saying for the first time showing kai is agreeing to obasanjo <laughs> there's something about it now what is there about it well we have listened to people who said that there is a very great and grand conspiracy to islamize nigeria and then you look at appointments key appointments you look at several things you are worried okay and then you look at the way they are giving part on the wrist to the so-called terrorists last time it even featured in the budget and it also featured in our borrowings, one million dollars, to buy military hardware to confront Boko Haram. And each time, federal government comes out to say that they are technically defeating, on top of the situation, or achieving progress on this terrorism matter, Boko Haram strikes. 
even more. It is also the first time somehow that the federal government would be negotiating with terrorists more than ever before to the tune of billions. Even though they always somehow pretend to claim that it is not true, they didn't pay ransom, but we all know okay, that the military echelon has been has been infiltrated so much that Boko Haram is planning budget for the military. That's as far as worse as it is right now in this country. Okay? Now, we even heard that cow has access to Asso Rock. Citizens, supposed citizens of Nigeria do not have access. Is that funny? <laughs> Okay. Well, while I do not want us to begin to look at Nigeria's issues from the prism of religion or ethnicism or ethnicity or ethnology, it is also important that we are conscious and cautious. When you say fulanization, let us operationalize it and develop and define the concept so that we can break it down. Maybe we can say it is something like nepotism to that extent. Nepotism. Somebody, you know, giving favor to members of a particular group against the others. That's nepotism. And it is wrong constitutionally. Maybe President Buhari needs to wake up and realize that he is president of Nigeria and not president of a group or an ethnic ethnic group or a religion we need to wake up you are not muslim president all right now olu johnson is saying Isla islamization is not even the first agenda but fulanization that's why you see the fulani, fulani heads men are treated the way they have been treated hmm olu yemi fari ibi I should I itemize what I need? Ah. Well, l let me not. I didn't tell this person what to buy, right? It just felt like okay, somebody in the media. These are the kind of things, you know. Maybe your own might be a camera. Your own might be a camera if you want to support. Is appreciated. Olu ibi, fari ibi olu yemi. Your own might be a camera that is in your mind. It might be laptop, it might be light, it might be wireless lapel. The lapel he brought is fantastic, only that it is not wireless. But it, it, it will do great work if there is wireless, you know, connectors with them. I'm just saying, for instance. So, but I already have lapel, okay? I already have lapel, and then I already have handheld mic. One, you may want to add to it. You want maybe camera, you want maybe light, you want maybe laptop, whatever it is that you feel within the context of media. I don't want to dictate, but I'm saying that they are, they are fantastic gifts so far. Okay, thank you for that question. Now, back to our topic a moment influences all the appointment is to the headsman, it's to the headsman. It's to the headsman. <laughs> uh, okay. Where are we going? But let me move away from that because I cannot immediately begin. I cannot immediately begin to say that is the way. But from persons who are saying it so far, there are likelihoods. The probability is now high that there's such agenda. Now, in light of that, if it is true, that is the assumption I'm working with. If it is true, what do you think? If an Igbo person comes in, they will say he wants to favor the Igbos too much. If the Yorubas come in, they will say, oh. If the Aosas come in, they will say Islamization and Fulanization. Isn't it? Okay. What is the solution? Now, the Yorubas are feeling marginalized. 
the goes are feeling marginalized. As I speak with you right now, Nemo that Konon at best, you cannot give what you do not have. Education is key, is paramount, it's very important. Also, is already threatening again, they want to return to strike. Reason federal government has failed to honor the agreement they had. Now, if federal government does not honor the agreement they had, education itself is not properly funded. And all of these uh, private institutions, they are the ones even encouraging federal government not to want to fund education or to want to increase school fees in public schools. Because one of the arguments is, oh, if people are paying millions of naira in Covenant University, almost seven and something thousand at Redeemers University for nation, how much are we charging a public institution? And we are asked, we know how much federal government is making and what they are supposed to be putting into education to fund it or to subsidize education. But that's not happening. Now, if also goes on strike again, who is the cause? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, if you look at it with closer scrutiny, you realize that the people we have in power do not cherish or understand the significance of education. And you cannot give what you do not have. There's an idea that says, to whom much is given, much is expected. But there's a question arising from that. To whom less is given, Ngo? What do you expect at all? Alright? Now, you have people leading you. People who cannot even recite national anthem. Last time I was talking to a lecturer at the University of Lagos. Some of their students, social science students, are still grappling with how to understand the use of SPSS. You know, a statistical package that aids in the calculation of, you know, descriptive and inferential statistical uh, properties. Still grappling. We are asked. Serious countries have even left SPSS. SPSS is already obsolete. Already obsolete. And there are some students of social science who cannot even use SPSS yet. And they'll be writing research and doing theories. Theories that are as old as 50 years. I'm telling you. 50 year old theory. They'll be quoting according to uh, according to Social Pressing 1976. This is 2019. Are there no recent researches? According to social person, you will see the most recent research reports or some journals and the most recent citation or the most recent author they cite is 1998. The most recent others are 1960, 1970, 1980. In a world that is highly competitive and innovative every day, that people are moving very fast at jet speed, we are still grappling with 1970 theory. And worst off is that those, theory, those theories do not even apply to us. Those theories were developed in their own country that apply to their own situation. They are not necessarily universal. And we are still here grappling with 1970 theories. Eh? Ogao. <laughs> Nigeria. You people have a very long way to go. You people. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't want to call myself, I don't want to say I'm one of or I'm part of. But you people have a very long way to go. Or let's say we, let me add myself, let me include myself. We have a very long way to go. Now, education is suffering, healthcare is suffering. You have your president that is always going to UK for medical checkup or for treatment. So what happens to those cases of Lassa fever? Nigerians dying of Lassa fever. Lassa fever. So you dare not even make mistake of falling healed to something more serious or critical. Your case is sorry. You have to go to TV Joshua's church. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm sorry. I joke too much. But I'm serious. Alright. Now, all of those things there, health sector is suffering, education is suffering, okay? Telecommunic electricity is suffering, there's no, as I speak with you right now, there's no electricity. I can't, the last time I saw electricity was people using generators. 
Okay, if it comes now, you are lucky. Quickly use it to iron your clothes because it will soon go. <laughs> ah, everything in the country is suffering. The roads, infrastructure are suffering. Nothing that I can pinpoint. The only thing that is flourishing in Nigeria as we speak right now is religion, churches and mosques. And I told somebody who for I will tell you this story maybe tomorrow. As another topic altogether, I have a new friend. I have a new friend who insisted I must start going to church after hearing my story. Said, Oh, you have to start going. Don't worry. Those ones are, I understand those ones are a problem. You must not start going to church. Well, let me quickly summarize. We went to the church on Sunday. Saint Community. Yeah. Saint Community or something is the name of the church. Alright. So, when we go to the church, um when we got to the church the man preached the pastor preached everything was nice i love it you know except for the rearrangement of procedure we started by praying for one hour in the stretch and a one kilo shelle one hour in the stretch praying just praying before the praise and worship so it's it's not the conventional method i was used to where you start with praise and worship they started with prayer one hour in the stretch no i think 30 minutes or one hour. Yeah, but I know that we stood praying for long before they started the service. By the time they started the service, you know, none of that, the man came up and preached. And the preaching was not asking us to pay money, was not asking us to. It was talking about the attribute of a Christian. And how does, what is your service and how does God accept your service? That is not about how much of church you go or how much of services you attend, but it's about your attitude towards your neighbor. The way you share what you have to support the next person. Those are your services to God. He talked about service to God. By the time we were done and we were going, she was now asking me, how impressed are you about this? I said, well, let me tell you my observations. Well, let me say I'm a little impressed that it is better than other ones that are trying to use scare tactics to make sure that you cover the last cover in your pocket. Although I would not even agree with that. <laughs> Amy, I'll cover my last cover to church. Like, if I take a cup of water and go and pour it in the ocean, it will not have no impact now. But if I take a cup of water and give it to somebody that is thirsty, I will save a life. There is a lifeline. Okay? So I will not give my money to church because church has, is already believed. It's already filled. They have burnt their money already. Too much. Buying private jets and all of that. So I can't give my money to church. I was like, okay. But this church I will give because they are not compelling me. They are not asking me. I said, okay. I said, but then... I realized that the preaching of the pastor is not different from my preaching. And my preaching is that your service to God and humanity is the most important. It's paramount. Alright? Love your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you serve your neighbor. You give your neighbor something. Alright? Okay? So, if you love your neighbor, you have something that they need. You give them. You have your neighbor, you give it's good, that is love, that is what Christ that is the attribute of a good Christian. So I agree. But hey, what did Jesus come to preach? Jesus came to summarize the Ten Commandments to two. Love your neighbor and love God. Now the question is, is God a Christian or a Muslim? If love is the summary of all the commandments of God, then if you practice love without going to church or mosque, if you practice love, you are not different from a Christian by practice without going to church. And going to church, mind you, does not qualify you for heaven. It is not your attendance. Nobody is marking it. No angel is marking your attendance in church, in those business centers. Alright? If you love your neighbor and you do right, you are not different in practice from a Christian. Similarly, if you read the Quran, and what does the Quran demand or request from you as a practitioner of Islam? Love your neighbor and all those commandments, you find that you figure out that you're already, you're you're already in law in line with all those commandments. So you are also not different from a Muslim by practice. So if they ask me my religion and I say it's my conscience, some people don't understand that my religion is my conscience. I'm still a Christian officially because that's what I grew up with, and I'm still marking it in every form that they provide to me. And they say faith or religion, Christian, Muslim. They provide two boxes usually. I just click. Christian because that's the one I grew up with but in reality my religion is my conscience 
God is not a Christian. God is not a Muslim. God pre-existed all these religions. Alright? Now, having said that, my religion is my conscience. If you do what is right, you avoid what is wrong. By practice, you are a Christian. If you do what is right and you do, you avoid what is wrong, by, by practice, you are also a Muslim. The same for many other major religions or religions that preach love and peace throughout the world. So you don't have to even narrow yourself or claim one religion. Yes, George, God bless you. That is the spirit. Your love for one another is your religion. That is what God wants for more. That is the commandment of God. Love one another. If you love your neighbor, alright, if you love your neighbor, you are not different from Christian, you are not different from Muslim. By practice. And that is the most important. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm running out of battery power and all, all that things. I'm already getting a lot that I have to round off. I'll see you guys tomorrow and I want to appreciate you. Then for those of you that are saying you want to also support, well, this is the number to reach me via WhatsApp. Some of you may want to ask for account number. Some of you may want to ask. You, want, you may want to donate. It's okay. I mean, do it. Alright? That's the number to reach me via WhatsApp especially. Uh, if you call, I don't pick, please do message. I will respond. All right. This Fulani matter, Islamization and Fulanization of Nigeria, well, I want you to think it through. I don't want to take a position yet. All right. But I know that some things are going on under that may lend, cre- that may give credence to that uh, allegation. And you have to be careful. Yes, Fulani radio license is also part of it. Thank you for reminding me, Mary Gold. It's it's a it's a new it's a new develop it's a development, not new development. Sorry, English people. It's a development. Full and radio license. Well, anyways, I'm getting warning from my system that I should close or it will close by itself. <laughs> All right. So my name is Shegun Lopez. If you are not already following us on social media, that's ob- at Objective Media on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, the same. And then I want to appreciate all of you for even if I come online midnight, you people will join me. I appreciate you all. I thank you for the love. I thank you for your support so far. We'll get this country back on track. All right. The school project is is in the pipeline. Work is ongoing. Uh, we'll start soon, and you start seeing it. All right. Other projects are also ongoing. You have to start reorientating as many agents as possible. Okay, because you cannot rescue this country uh, just easily. It's not going to be easy. You know, there are, there are 19 states of the north out of 36 states of Nigeria. If you have uh, northerners who are not oriented, orient, who do not have orientation, okay, you can be shouting shore from today to tomorrow, or shouting mohalo, or shouting you are wasting your time. It is only few of us who understand. So we have to make sure that the understanding we have goes round before the next three to four years the understanding of what a better country should be it has to go round before the next three years so it's a whole lot of work that we have to start mm? it's capital intensive but we don't have the capital but the little little we can do we'll do you know if you touch one soul that touch that soul is capable of touching 10 other souls so consider if we touch five million souls before the next three years mm? calculate the, the geometric progression what they are capable of doing too all right so thank you so much everybody and uh, i'll give you i'll leave you in the hand of larry k larry, larry safari uh as i close and say thank you so much and i'll see you again good night they call me pagan, pagan, pagan. Then they say I be Satan, Satan, Satan. Cause I believe I be winner, winner, winner. Stop calling me a sinner, a sinner, sinner. Uh, if you truly believe in the church, oh, as I don't want to know. If you really believe in the Moscow, me, I don't want to know. If you believe in the past also, as I don't want to know. If you believe in any man.